Hello and welcome to another MuleSoft video tutorial on YouTube channel of tutorialspedia.com. In this video tutorial, we are going to cover a very important topic which is Mule 4 error handling. We will be looking into uh, different um, error related components and, and uh, different options, including on error propagate, on error continue, global error handling, as well as tri scope, will be demonstrated. Here is a little more detail about what we are going to cover in this video tutorial and what you will be learning in the next uh, few minutes. First of all, we will have a theoretical explanation at a high level for the Mule 4 error handling. And then I will have a demonstration of uh, different uh, error handling components where I will show that uh, in a main flow or in a subflow, uh, what happens if we use on error continue with some type of error that occurs and how we can utilize on our propagate what is the difference between on our continue and on our propagate and what's the scenario where we should be using on error propagate or on error continue then i will demonstrate about global error handler that how you can create and how you can configure a global error handler and how uh, different errors propagate and how the behavior varies uh, if we have global error handlers and if we have uh, error handlers at uh, individual uh, uh, message flow level and we will also see that uh, how uh, we can use the tri scope and how uh, error handling becomes different uh, and how the propagation of error between the subflows and the main flows into the global error handler varies in different cases and last but not least we will also see that how we can define our own custom error types with custom name spaces and error types Okay, so at a high level, uh, if we uh, look into the error handling concepts, uh, whenever you are implementing any type of uh, in integration scenario, the integration flows, not necessarily in Mule, rather in any programming language, in any ESB or in any software, you are sure that uh, you cannot 100% avoid the errors. Errors are uh, part and parcel of any application and at some point you come across some sort of errors be it system errors or message level errors be it business errors or validation errors so uh, it's very important for any kind of integration project that you're working on that you uh, you you do the needful uh, to handle those errors to take care of those errors to make sure that uh, errors are handled and propagated in a proper way and application behavior uh, is not completely uh, impacted just because errors are not being handled or being catered uh, correctly. So if we talk about uh, MuleSoft and Mule4 ESB, there are two uh, major high level type of errors that can occur. One is system errors and the second one is message level errors. System errors can be uh, startup errors or it can be uh, any error related to connectivity to any external system. For example, if you're trying to connect to uh, Salesforce or some other external system, and you are not able to connect to that for any reason be it the network uh, connection connectivity issues or some other issues on the other application side so these type of errors are system errors and if we talk about system errors they are not configurable uh, in mule 4 uh, as the system itself is going to handle and for any kind of uh, such system level errors what happens is that whenever such an error occurs mule itself sends an error notification to the registered listeners and logs the error for example if you have a http listener based uh, flow and you are trying to connect to some external system uh, and there is some error that occurs there then um, this uh, has this is going to be handled by the mules default error handler and uh, it's going to uh, just notify to the registered listener in this case http listener and then it's going to uh, log the error message so you will see just the error but you will have no way to um, configure and to handle this error at your own. And if the error is caused by a connection failure, as in case of an external connection, then if you have a configured reconnection strategy for your connection, uh, that's going to be uh, executed as well. For example, maybe you have uh, configured a reconnection strategy to try out, uh, retry uh, this, this connection for X number of times. So in that case, uh, that reconnection strategy will also be executed. And if uh, it still doesn't connect, uh, li like if you have uh, 
three uh, retries as an example and if does not connect even after three uh, retries uh, this means that reconnection strategy also could not be um, um, fruitful so in that case a uh, mule is going to uh, uh, to send uh, an error notification to the listener and the error will be logged and you will be see you will be able to see the error in the logs the second type of uh, errors which you will come across quite often are message level errors so these are uh, these are the type of errors that can occur uh, during the execution of the flow and it can be at any processor level any component level for example if you are uh, implementing uh, some logic where you are handling certain uh, certain level of uh, xml to json conversions or you are having some data a lot of complex data view expressions and any error that occurs there or there are some uh, validation if you have added a validation module and you are doing certain validations and any error that occurs there or if you have some custom errors that you have defined so all those type of errors which are happening inside the message flows those are kind uh, of errors which are uh, categorized as message level errors and these are the errors which can be handled explicitly and our focus in this tutorial is basically on this message level errors we will see that if a message level error occurs how we can use uh, error handlers how we can use uh, on error continue how we can use on error propagate how we can use try blocks and also how we can use global error handlers as well as as i explained earlier we will also see how we can use custom uh, how we can uh, raise some custom errors with custom namespaces and custom error types so i think uh, much has been explained from theoretical point of view so now i will uh, jump into the demonstration where we will be creating a project uh, in any point studio and see the things in action i have already created a blank project in any point studio with the name mule4 error handling right now it doesn't have anything so we are going to uh, start our demonstration from the scratch so by default when you create a project with the same name as the project name a configuration file dot uh, xml file gets generated in the src main mule flows uh, folder and this is where we are going to start our implementation so what i'm going to do is that first of all i'm going to create a main flow and the main flow i want to create with the http listener so the source for this will be http listener so let me drag this listener and when you drag the listener a flow gets created automatically so i'm going to rename this flow to main flow okay so we have a main flow and we need to configure the listener first as uh, we want that any uh, demonstration that we are going to do for this tutorial uh, we will uh, the source will be uh, our client which can be postman from where we will be hitting uh, this uh, service so let me configure it in the connector configuration i'll just click on plus button and here i'm going to specify the host and port you can use the global properties files as well for your real projects you will not be hard coding but in our case uh, i'm just uh, making it simple and i will use the same port 8081 and i will not change the host as well as 8081 is available on my machine so i'll just click on ok and here in the path i'm going to specify slash rs handler so this is going to be the path for our service and as uh, i just saved it Next, what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to call a subflow or, uh, or another flow. So for that purpose, let me first add a flow, another flow uh, underneath. So I will just uh, add a flow. And this flow I'm going to name as child flow. I did not create it as a subflow, but uh, I just created a child flow because i want to demonstrate error handling at the child flow level as well if you use a subflow then you cannot do the error handling at the subflow so we will use the child flow and let's uh, now have a flow reference at the main flow uh, which will be referring to the child flow so i will explain things uh, side by side while i'm doing basically what i want to uh, explain here and demonstrate is that I will uh, generate some errors at the child flow level and we will see and we will observe the behavior of the application 
with error handling uh, configured at the child level with the error handling configured at the main flow level and then we will see what happens and how it's these errors uh, are cascaded or propagated whenever we have a global error handler as well so here i'm going to reference to that child flow and let me rename this to same child flow so basically what we are doing uh, we have a main uh, flow from where we are calling a child flow so before uh, that i'm going to add a uh, set variable that's available in my favorites so i want to just uh, add a flow uh, uh, I, I want to add a set variable and where i will be add, uh, adding some value to a variable so var variable name is going to be var dot test okay let me do it var underscore test and the value that i'm going to assign here is one plus one i can add two but i'm just adding it as this one plus one so basically uh, let me rename it to var underscore test and this var underscore test is going to have the value uh, here you see one plus one so one plus one is a basic arithmetic so it's not going to throw any error you might have guessed it this means that once listener will receive a request this variable will be populated and we will be calling a child flow so up till this point there is no error that can happen but as soon as we go to the child flow i'm going to do something here which will uh, cause the error okay so before that let me add a logger here so just i add a logger here i will uh, be running it in debug mode later that's why i, I want to have a lot of loggers here so here what i'm going to do uh, for the message for this logger is that i'm going to uh, add the value so it's where the variable is where wars dot sorry var underscore test so whatever the value of this i'm going to uh, log here so after that in the subflow what i'm going to do is that i will use the set variable again for the same variable i'm going to what i'm going to do let's name it as same uh, which we have in the previous case uh, which is var underscore test and the value that i'm going to assign is uh, one divided by zero so uh, basically one divided by zero means undefined so this means that whenever this set variable uh, processor uh, will be executed it will throw an error because one divided by zero is uh, undefined which is basically an error so here we uh, we will see that there will be an error so after calling the child flow i want to add another logger to see the behavior in this typical scenario where we haven't uh, done any error handling so here in the logger i'm just going to uh, pop uh, again try to print var dot var underscore test and let me write something after calling child flow okay so for the previous logger i'm going to uh, a string and i'm con concatenating before calling child flow so this will help us to identify exactly at what point this logging has happened so in that in the subflow we have set variable and i want to add another logger after this set flow because i want to see what will be the behavior if this error occurs is it going to move to the next processor or not of course it's not going to move but just we want to add it to the as a as a logger to uh, to prove the concept so here i will write after set variable in child flow okay so now uh, if you see here what we did basically we created a main flow we did not cover the error handling in the main flow we created a child flow again in the error handling we did nothing so right now if we try to uh, run this one and observe the behavior we did not have any global uh, error handler as well so i will run it in debug mode and then we will see um, by hitting the uh, http listener so it will take uh, some time and uh, then it will be uh, loaded in the mule uh, runtime embedded mule runtime 
and then we will be able to hit. So we can see the status is deployed. This means that uh, uh, in the embedded mule runtime, this project has been deployed. And now uh, we can uh, proceed with the hitting this service. Let me toggle the breakpoint because we want to uh, look into the expected uh, results and uh, inputs and outputs at individual processor level. So I have added a breakpoint just uh, at the initial uh, level of the, of the flow uh, at the set variable after the listener. And now from the postman, uh, I will be hitting this uh, service. So it's going to be localhost colon 8081 and slash error handling because error handling is the one this sorry error handler so this is the path so i will have to use this slash error handler okay so if i try to hit this service <coughs> uh, we should be seeing that uh, it should be coming to this uh, set variable Okay, so it took some time. Now it's at the, uh, this uh, set variable level. So right now, if we just hit uh, F6, it will go to the next processor. And if we see the variable, the value of the var underscore test is 2 because we did 1 plus 1. And here it's going to log this. And if we just click F6, you can see here that we have done the logging, which says 2, B, 2 was the value, and it is before calling the child flow. Now it's calling the child flow. So it will go to the child flow and it here it will try to set the variable if we click F6. Okay, in, in the set variable, you can see that it caused an error. And if you just expand this error, you can see that the error description is dvn by zero. Error type is mule colon expression. And if you expand it further, you can see the identifier is expression and the namespace of this error is mule. And you can see all the details for this error. Now we want we will be observing what happens in this scenario. Right now there is no error handler and no error scope defined at the subflow level. So is it going to uh, go to the next processor which is logger or not? So that's what uh, if we click F6, so we can see it did not go to the next processor because of that error. So it will just terminate. So even it did not go to the next logger at the main flow level. So if you see here. What happened is that once this error happened in the subflow, there was no error handler defined. And at the main flow also, there was no error handler defined. In this case, the default error handler from the mule, that one took the control. And it just threw the error back to the client. And it did not process any additional processes after this. And if we go to the client, we should have received 500 internal server errors. So we can see 500 server error. And the detail of the error is like this, which is showing us all the details of this error. Right. So this was the uh, original uh, use case uh, where we are not having any error. handling. Now what we are going to do, we are going to uh, just modify this uh, child flow. And since the error happened at the child flow, so error handler, we are going in the error handling uh, scope of this child flow, we are going to add, add some components. So what I'm going to do first from the core, we, if you go to the core module, you see we have some error related, error handling related components. We have error handler, we have on error continue, we have on error propagate, and we have raise error. So what I'm going to use here is on error continue. So I'll just drag and drop it, this on error continue in the child flow. So on error continue, what it will do, if an error occurs, this, then the control uh, execution will come within this on error continue, it will handle the error. Whatever processors we add here, those will be executed. And then once the control goes back to the main flow, it will be considered, it will return here as a success. So in that case, it will go to the next processor because after calling the child flow, error already has been handled in the child flow, child flow and on error continue returns success back to the main flow and the main flow will continue its execution. So let's see this uh, in the real. So here in the child flow, what happens? Error occurs. And then we have on error continue. So on error continue, I'm going to just add a logger just to uh, prove what I'm saying. And here in the message, I'm going to write vars dot. Okay, so 
let me just write insight on other continue in drive okay so now we will be logging this one in the child flow and here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to concatenate the value as well so I will just use plus plus wars dot sometime uh, and the data sense does not sense it correctly so I will have to use it myself so what was the name of this variable var underscore test so I will write it explicitly as string okay so what we will be doing is that we will be logging whatever we receive here so now what we have done is that uh, we are adding our error handler in the child flow since it's already running we should have uh, seen that uh, the changes have been um, added to the to, to the uh, to the application which is already running so let's switch back to the debug perspective and hit the service again so i'll go back to the client and i'll hit the service now again we will uh, go through uh, each of the processor in the debug mode so here we see we have we have reached to the logger and here we will see that it will log the value as 2 and as before the value is 2 and then it will uh, call the child flow and it will go to the child flow here in the set variable since we are doing uh, dvn uh, 1 by 0 which is an error so it's going to cause an error okay now once it gets an error since we have the error handling already defined with our error continue uh, component in our child flow so the control is going to this child uh, error handler so you can see that now it has come to the on error continue scope and here it's going to the logger so it has logged something let's see what it logs. so it says inside on error continue in child flow and the value is 2 this means then the previous value because the in a in a subflow we can access the variables from the main flow so whatever the value was there it has received it now is it going to this logger or not that's what you will observe now so it if you see it did not go to this logger rather it went back to the uh, logger at the main flow so after calling child flow so this means it came here because this is the one where we have uh, set after calling child flow so basically what happens is that whenever you have uh, error handler scope defined in your uh, child flow and you have on error continue if an error occurs any activity within that child flow after any processor after that error will not be executed rather the control will go to the error handling scope and in on error continue in this case we have only logger if we had any additional processors here that would have also been executed and after that instead of going back to the uh, subsequent activity in the child flow control will go to the next processor at the main flow so in the main flow the next one was logger so this logger has executed the and then we see that this is the value which has been printed by this logger so this is how we have on error continue uh, which works in the child flow so now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to uh, make a little more change I want to see also on error propagate how it's going to behave in the child flow. So let's switch back to the uh, uh, to the normal mode instead of debug mode in the design mode. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to add another error handler with the name uh, on error propagate in the same child flow. So now this child flow has two uh, error handlers. But there is one thing when we created on error continue in the type we did not specify anything. So I'm going to specify something. So what I want, by default, it was any. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to specify that whenever expression error occurs, there should be certain. Uh, it should be on a propagate because in our case it was on uh, expression error. But whenever this stream maximize size exceed, which 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 is not the case in our case. So I'm going to select this for the first uh, uh, error handler, which is uh, on error continue. So whenever this error occurs, it will go to on error continue. But whenever the error occurs about uh, expressions, which is our case, it's going to be uh, handled by this on error propagate component. So let's add the logger here 
in on error propagate and see and log something. So here I'm going to write on error propagate in child flow. And then I'm going to just print the value plus plus bars dot bar underscore test as string. Okay. So now we are going to uh, call the service. So basically uh, what will happen uh, as before the control will uh, go to the child flow by calling this child flow reference and then once it goes to the child flow it will result an error in the set variable. But the error here is of expression type because 1 by 0 error is the expression error. So in this case we have two error handler here. One is on error continue which is only uh, handling maximum size exceeded error. And the second one is on error propagate, which is handling expression error. In our case, it's an expression error. This means that it will be handled by this on error propagate. So on error propagate, this logger will log the value. And after that, this error will be propagated back to the main flow. Error propagation in error continue is different. In case of error conti on, con on continue on error, when it goes back to the main flow, in main flow, it continues to the next processor because it comes back as a success to the main flow with error handled on the uh, child flow but in case of on error propagate this means that error is going to be all the um, these uh, uh, processors in the uh, on error propagate will be executed but after that once the control goes back to the main flow it will be returned as an error so that means it once it comes back to this uh, uh, flow reference it will not go to the next processor rather it will throw an error so let's see that so let's save everything and it will be automatically loaded so we switch back to the debug perspective okay so we switch back to the debug perspective and try to hit the service okay so now if we are hitting the service and we will observe the behavior F6, it go to the logger. Let me expand it a little. So now it's going to child flow. Here it's causing an error. So if it causing it's causing an error, now expectations are the correct behavior is that it should be com coming to this logger, which is inside the on error propagate. So yeah, it came to this logger on error propagate. If you F6, if you see here in the console, you can see that it has logged on error propagate in child flow with the value 2. Now, uh, do you think that this logger is going to be executed? No, because as I explained, because it's on error propagate. So it has been propagated to the main flow and it has returned an error back to the client. So now we have seen client has received 500 internal server error. So in case it was handled by this one, um, if it was handled with on error continue, then it was going to return a success because in that case, this error is already handled. So let's try that. So what we are going to do on error continue, we are going to change, we are going to just switch the types. So this one we are going to use expression and on error propagate, we are going to use other type of error. So we will just select the type as stream. So now, once error will occur, it will co come to on error continue. So let's now uh, see again. So it's already loaded. Let me clear the logs for a better uh, readability and hit the service. So now let's do F6. I will not go to individuals, uh, individual processor outputs as I've explained already. So set variable, it go to error and it should come to this logger because here we are handling expression and now it's going back to the logger so once it goes to the logger and if we do f6 and if you see the client side we see status 200 okay which is a success status the reason is that when this error was handled by the client it was handled by on error continue and in the on error continue returned a success so it returned a success so any subsequent uh, uh, processors that we have in the main flow are executed and then once the response is returned back to the client it is a success response so basically all the error handling was mitigated 
or it was transparent to the client it was handled using the on error continue okay so now we want to see another thing what if we have error handler at the main flow level as well so right now what we were doing before is that we have only error handler at the subflow so let's add it at the main flow level as well so let's switch back to the design uh, perspective and here i'm going to add on error continue in the in the main flow okay so here i'm going to add on error continue and inside on error continue i'm just just going to add a logger and in the logger i will just type a message logged inside on error continue in main flow i'll not uh, print the variable value as uh, that doesn't make sense here anymore as we are clear on that okay now what happens whenever an error will occur in the main flow since in our case the error is not occurring on the main flow rather it's occurring on the sub flow so i in the child flow sorry not the sub flow it's a child flow so when error is occurring on the child flow then in case if it's on error continue then it will uh, go back to the main flow and in the main flow it will be considered as a success so it will not go to the error handler but in case if an error occurs in the child flow and we were propagating the error back to the main flow then in the main flow if we have an error handler it will go to that so let's again uh, just switch this so on error continue we want only uh, the stream maximum size error which is not the case and we have only expression error so here we want to propagate this expression error so this one i will switch to expression so expression error if occurs in the child flow we will be returning it or propagating it back to the main flow and in the main flow we have added a error handler so it will sh um, uh, this scenario will demonstrate that how we are going to cover error handling at the main flow level whenever an error gets propagated from the child flow so let's go to the console and verify that it has loaded yes it is loaded let me clear it okay so now i will hit it again okay so in the main flow we will uh, just uh, move to the next uh, processor we have logger we have child flow child flow will cause an error now it will go to the on error propagate yes it went to on error propagate it propagated the error and now let's see uh, once the control is back to the main flow what it's going to do it's on error propagate which means we have an error here and if you see the error the error is of which type expression and here if we do f6 you can see since the error came back to the main flow and main flow already have an error handler so the control has gone to the on error continue inside the main flow okay now it's going to handle this so what it's going to do is going to just log it so if we f6 you can see that it has logged which means logged inside on error continue in the main flow you can see here all right so now since it's on error continue this means even though it has been handled it's not going to uh, process the next processor which is the logger because it is on error continue and it so in this case what will happen is that after it has logged the error on in the uh, on error continue it will uh, do on error continue on error continue mean it's going to return a success back to the client because uh, on error continue is not going to propagate the error back to the client so if you see in the client you can see that we have 200 ok response so this is how we have on error continue uh, that works in the main flow now what we are going to do we are going to switch back to the designs uh, perspective and we are going to add on error propagate in the main flow so i will add on error propagate in the main flow and i will just uh, drag and drop this logger inside that and i will remove this on error continue so now in the main flow we have only on error propagate so let me change the information that we are logging so let's change it to propagate so now what's going to happen is that the main flow is going to call the child flow error is going to happen in the child flow child flow is going to propagate the error back to the main flow and main flow is having an error handler but again main flow's error handler is on error propagate this means that it's going to uh, again call uh, the default uh, this is going to propagate the error back to the client 
So the client should receive 500 internal server error. So now let's uh, observe this behavior. I'll just click send. Okay, I'll do F6, which is to, to proceed to the next uh, processor. So we can see that the logging has happened in the child flow. Control goes back to the main flow because it was on error propagate. So it has received an error. So this error is going to be handled in on error propagate. It's going to log and after it has logged, you can see here it has logged logged inside on error propagate in main flow. After it has logged, it's going to just return the error back to the client. So we can see on the client side we have received 500 internal server error and this error messages here. All right. So now what we are going to do is that we are going to see another important topic which is global error handler. Right now what happens is that whatever error handlers we have defined, these error handlers are at the individual scope levels, individual message flow levels. So we have error handler in the main flow and we have error handler in the child flow. So what if we want to have a global error handler and how it's going to behave and how um, errors are going to be propagated between the main flow, child flow and the global flow in that sense. That's what we are going to see now. For this purpose, let me switch back to the design perspective and I'm going to add a new flow, which I will name as global.xml. So I will write new, choose new and we will choose new configuration file and let's name it as global.xml and in our global.xml configuration file we are going to add from the core module some error handler so we are going to drag and drop this error handler so we have this global error handler defined so let's now uh, add something inside this global error handler so in the global error handler inside this we are going to add on error continue Okay, so we are going to add on error continue, rather let me add both on error continue and on error propagate, but to, for two different type of errors. So on error continue, what I'm going to do is that whenever there is an expression error, I want continue. And whenever there is any other errors, which is in our case, we have only this stream maximum size exceeded error, we will uh, do the propagation. Means basically in our case, since it's expression error, we will be continuing only. So let me just add a logger here and inside this logger I will just write logged by global on error continue and the second one I will just write which which will never happen actually but let's add it for the sake of nothing logged by on error propagate global Okay, so now we have global error handlers as well. Let me explain you a very important concept that whenever you have an error handler defined at your uh, message level or at your individual uh, flow level, it will not propagate to the global error handler. So if an error occurs in your uh, uh, message flow and you have already defined an error handler here, then it's not going to hit the global and it's going to bypass the global error handler. So it will go to the default error handler. This is something that we are going to just uh, check now. So in our case, what happens, uh, what we have implemented right up till now is that client is propagating the error. And in case of an expression error, yeah, so here child propagation in case of an expression error, and it goes, goes back to the main flow. And main flow has on error propagate. So it's going to propagate, but is it going to the global or not? We have already uh, uh, global, uh, we have added this expression type of error in the global, but you will observe that it will not go there as of now. So first, let's try this. And then I will explain you how we can uh, still achieve that. So I will go to the client. I'll hit this service. And I'll do F6. So it goes to the child flow, it throws an error, the error gets propagated after logging from the child flow. It comes to the main flow, main flow has an error handler. So this, on, this one has on error propagate, this means it's going to propagate the error. And you can see that we have received a response on the client. It did not go at all to the global. So we have this uh, on error continue for expression. 
so if it was going there we should have received 200 okay on the client side but that did not happen why it did not happen because if error handler is already there in our flow it's not going to global uh, error handler so let's do one thing let's remove this on error continue from here so if you delete this it means once error will be propagated back to the main flow main flow does not have an error handler so expectation should be that it should be now going to the global and in the global uh, in case of an expression error we have this logger and then its owner continue so you might have guessed it that in this case the expectation as expected result should be the client should be receiving 200 okay so let's see is it true or not so i just uh, sent a new request and if i do f6 and it has an error in the child flow and it has been locked it control comes back to the main flow and now if you see it did not go to the global error handler and if you see on the client side we have 500 internal server errors why it did not go even though we have global error handler defined all right so the reason is that we haven't yet configured it correctly so we have to configure it we have to go to the global elements and we have to create it so we we will click on the create button and in a global configuration we will have to choose configuration and we will have to click ok and here we have to specify what, which one is our default error handler so we have to choose the error handler that we just created previously so we will choose global error handler and we will not make any other changes and we will just click ok so now we have defined our global error handler. Previously we just uh, configured, uh, defined it, but we did not configure it. So till the time you don't configure it, it will not work. So now let's go back. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I think we will have to uh, reload the project because uh, adding a new global configuration like this might not have been uh, automatically loaded. So let me stop it and run it again in debug mode. And now uh, our expectation is that it should be hitting to the global error handler for the scenario where we don't have an error handler at the message flow. So let's debug it again. It will take uh, some time to get loaded and then we will be hitting it again. So it's again deployed uh, in, uh, and we can see in the console. So let's try to hit it again. We just send a request. It will come to the var set variable, and uh, there we have a breakpoint, and then we will uh, proceed one by one by each processor. So let's see. It goes to the child flow, returns an error, goes to the main flow, and here you can see now it has come to the global error handler because we have created a global error handler and we have configured the global error handler. So if we just so if you see it, it is on error continue. So the, as ex, the expected result is that the client should be receiving 200 OK. So if we do F6 and if you go back to the client, we see that it is re receiving 200 OK. So basically, this is how you create a global error handler. And this global error handler will work. Again, I will explain that if you have an error handler inside your, um, in, in inside your flow, at your flow level, and control goes to that flow level uh, error handler, uh, even if it doesn't go if you have an error handler which is uh, if you have defined on error propagator on error continue uh, no matter uh, for that specific type of error or any type of error then it will not go to the global error handler like in our case uh, we have uh, at the global level uh, on error continue and we have defined this on error propagate as well so if i just delete this on a propagate from here and define this at the um, individual flow level you will see that even though it will not the control will not go to this particular type of error but it will not go to the global as well let me add this and then i will explain it more so we want on error propagate to be sorry let me go here on okay I, i'll add this on error propagate and this is for the type of error which is not going to happen stream maximum site exception so i will not Okay, let's add a logger, which is not the case. It's not going to reach here, but just to show you, I will add something over here. And we are not going to add any content to this logger since it's not going to hit this. So just save it. And now from the client side, let's send the request again.
element. Okay, so the request has arrived. So I will just have six. It goes to the child flow. It returns an error. The error gets uh, propagated to the main flow. And in the main flow, we have already an error handler. But this error handler is for the type of error which hasn't occurred. So it will not go to this on error propagate. And this type of error is already handled in the global. But since we have uh, error handler defined in the in our flow level, it did not go to the global error handler, despite the fact that this type of error handling was there. So this means that global error handler will be invoked. So we see 500 internal server error on the client side. So this means this type of um, global error handler is useful only whenever you are not handling it at the individual message flow level. If you are handling at individual level, then it will not pass to the global if an error occurs. Okay. So now the next thing that I want to show and explain is how we can have try scope in our uh, message flow. So let's add something. So I'm going to favorites. No, not in the favorites, in the core module. <clears throat> Let me just type it. Try. So after we call the, the child flow, we are going to add a try block here. And inside this try block, what I'm going to do, I'm going to raise an error intentionally. And this will show you also how you can use custom errors. So here in the raise error in the type, let's define our custom name space and error tutorial speedia colon custom underscore error. And message I'm going to use a custom error raised by tutorial speedia demo. Okay. So now what is, what's happening is that we are having a try scope and in image in if you observe here it has its own error handling but right now we did not add this so let me uh, just uh, fix this error from the child flow so that the child flow does not throw an error so now the child flow will be invoked and child flow will return success and error will be here so let's now switch to debug save everything and hit the service again so now i just hit the service and if you will observe now that the client and uh, sorry the child flow will have set variable which will be a success because it has one divided by one which is a valid case now the control comes back to the client to the main flow and here it is going to raise the error here in the raise error, now if you see the error, its description is custom error raised by tutorial speed DR demo. And if you see the error details in error type, it's identified as customer custom underscore error namespace is tutorial speed DR. So this is the error that we are raising intentionally. Now, in this case, we have a error handler here. So what it's going to do? That's what we are going to see. So if you see here that once this error occurred, the control has not gone there. Rather, we have received an error, 500 and, uh, internal server error and the message that we written for our error. So basically what happened is that if you are using a try scope in your message flow, then if an error occurs there, this error is not going to if it's not handled it's not going to go to the global and if we change the global to anything so instead of this to because our case uh, error was custom error so let's make it any so what we have done is that our global error handler is going to handle any type of errors so is it going to hit the global that's what we will observe now so now if we hit this uh, service again and we do f6 it's going to raise this custom error and now if you see because previously in the global we had a specific type of error handler but in this case it has uh, uh, it's handling all type of errors so it's going to handle this custom error as well 
and if you do f6 the client should have received 200 okay still uh, yeah i scroll to the next scope next uh, uh, processor in the scope because this error has been handled and f6 and now if you go to the client you have received 200 okay so this means that if you are using a tri scope and in the tri scope even though this uh, if you see this uh, flow it has error handler so normal case if you don't use a tri scope and if you have an error handler at the message flow level it will not go to the global because it has already a message flow level error handler but if you are using a tri scope this has its own error handler so if you are not having any error handling at this level i mean at the error handling level within the tri block this will not check in the man, in the flow level rather it will uh, in that case it will go to the global so it means that this try has its own error handling so try with its own error handling is be, will be dealt as a as a separate message flow itself so it has its own error handler so it will not be dependent on the error handler of the main flow and if it if it doesn't have error handling it will go to the uh, global error handler in case if there was error handling configured here then it will check here and it will not go to the global so so it will behave just like another um, another flow <clears throat> now the last thing that i want to show you if you go to the listener and if you go to the responses right now we were receiving in the response the error message descriptions only so here if you see here in the error responses if you see we have two things we have responses with the status code and the reason phrase and we have uh, this body for the error response so let's do the changes here i want to re return json error and what i want to return is okay let me edit like this so i will write error message error dot description error type error dot error type dot identifier and error mm, namespace error dot error type dot namespace so it should be error description you can name it anything error disk and error message error dot okay let me add a comma here error dot message okay let's keep it like this so previously whenever an error was occurring you were only getting uh, uh, not in json in the in the plain text format only error description now we are going to see that how we can return all these things so in this case i will have to do something to uh, raise the error so what i will do in the global if you see we have on error continue which is returning a success so in we want to return a failure so what i will do i will add a on error propagate so that it propagates the error so on error propagate let me add this logger let me remove this on error continue okay so i will just log propagate okay now if you switch back to the debug save everything if we will hit it now we want to see how the response is going to be structured exactly as what we did in our uh, http listener okay so now let's hit it okay so i'll go f6 f6 it will go to the child flow it will return success then raise error will raise an error it should go to the global yeah it went to the global it did the logging and now it should return the error back to the client and if you see in the client according to what we did we got the message error description a custom error raised by a tutorials pdr demo error type is custom underscore error error namespace is tutorials pdr which was the custom namespace that we defined error message is null so this is how we uh, create our own custom error types and then we can uh, also modify the response for structure that we are going to receive in case of an error 
So that's it from uh, this uh, error handling video tutorial for Mule 4. I hope that uh, it will be helpful for you. I might not have gone into much nitty gritties, but the basics and the high level concepts with the demonstration have been clarified in this tutorial. And uh, if you do more practice uh, with different scenarios uh, of having errors at the main level, at the child level, handling it at the global level, at the message flow level, at the tri scope level, you will learn it more. So if you want to uh, learn more about Mule 4, you can go through the other videos on my Mule, 4, uh, Mule Soft to Mule 4 tutorials playlist. And you will see plenty of videos there covering different topics. And of course, uh, the most uh, credible and the most uh, updated uh, uh, source for the knowledge about MuleSoft is its official documentation. I will always recommend to go through the official documentation as well. And if you have any questions, any ambiguities, you can write in the comment section. I'll try my best to respond as soon as possible. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as more is yet to come. Thank you.